It's finally here and available for you to order the Everything Presence One, which is pretty much my dream smart home presence sensor that I have wanted for literally years, but no one was making until now. I am really excited to be able to finally show you this in its final form. And I am super proud that we actually made a dedicated hardware for Home Assistant and for the Home Assistant community that is local control, no cloud, and has so many features packed into it. So this guy has a millimeter wave sensor for presence, a PIR with a huge 12 meters of range for fast motion, a temperature and humidity sensor, a light illuminance level, an ESP32 with ESP Home and the brand new Bluetooth proxy feature, USB-C and additional GPIO pins for even more expandability. And it's available for you to pre-order right now if you do want to get your hands on one. The response so far has been absolutely insane. It's only been up for around 24 hours at this point and there isn't actually many units left. So if you do want to pre-order one, then please feel free to do so before they are gone. I'll have it linked down in the description. And yeah, I can't wait for this. Let's take a look at the board, how to set it up and how to connect it to Home Assistant for local fast presence detection. Thank you to SwitchBot for sponsoring this video. You'll all be pleased to hear, I'm sure, that SwitchBot are having a prime fall sale and all, yes, all of their products have 25% off with code 7 SWITCHBOT. This is available on both their website as well as Amazon and it lasts from the 11th of October until the 17th of October. So if you were thinking of grabbing a bargain now that many of the devices integrate well with Home Assistant, now might just be the time. So what are you waiting for? Links are down in the description. When you first receive your Everything Presence One, you'll have a few different components depending on what you actually purchase from the shop. So obviously you will have the Everything Presence One board. So this is the base board that hopefully everyone will have chosen because the other components wouldn't make sense without it. This is the main board. You'll have to excuse that I'm just using one that is unpopulated with many of the components at the moment, just due to prototyping. Uh, but your, com your board will obviously have components on it. At least I hope so. So this is the Everything Presence One board itself. And then you will also have your sensors that will need to slot in and sort of plug in uh, depending on what you choose. So we also sell the DF Robot millimeter wave sensor as well as the Panasonic PIR that goes into the EP1 board. We will either supply these if you purchase the bundle or if you have these from a previous video that you watched and you picked them up yourself, then you will be supplying them. And then finally, you will also have the case if you decided to pick up a case, which is this guy over here. We'll come back to that in just a second. So the first thing you want to do when you get your EP1 is to first slot it into the case. The case comes in a few different little bits. This is the main back cover. So this is where the board will actually slot into and sort of sit in. You have the front cover, which will clip over onto the front of the board. You'll have the back ball socket for the stand. You'll have a ring, which helps to tighten the stand down. And then you'll have the stand itself. So the first thing you want to do is to actually put the ball socket into the stand. So this goes through from the front side. So front side, put, put that in like so. So the, the, the socket is on the back and then you grab your the tightening ring and then just simply tighten it down. So that's just screws down to tighten everything in place. Give it a good tighten down. And then that is really on there. That is not gonna come out. Then the next thing you'll want to do is to have this facing down with the USB port at the bottom. Line up your USB port on the board and then just simply slot it in uh, and it should actually just click into place. And then once that's in there, that is again, not gonna come out anytime soon. Once the EP1 board is installed into the case, we're next going to install the sensor. So our PIR, as well as our millimeter wave sensor. And these are bundled separately just so they don't get damaged in shipping. Now the black socket on the middle of the board with the three pinholes is where our motion sensor will slot into. Now there are two slots on the board for the millimeter wave sensor on the right and the top, but please make sure you only plug something into one of them at any one time because they are connected together. So please don't try and use one slot for the millimeter wave sensor and then try and plug something else into the other headers. They are not for that. 
and you may cause damage to the board. The reason that there is two slots is so that you can choose which orientation to have the millimeter wave sensor in. The slot at the top will give you the widest angle for the millimeter wave sensor to work with, but it does have a little bit less vertical height. And then the side slot will give you the most vertical height, but it will give you less horizontal width. So the top slot is probably going to be the one that most people are going to want to use, but the EP1 does give you the choice to suit your environment. The headers are marked with five volts. So just line that up with the five volts on the millimeter wave sensor, and then just push it into the slot. I will say that we did make the modules removable so that they are kind of modular, but please be careful with the millimeter wave sensor in particular, not to bend the pins by accident, because obviously it is sitting in mid air with a little bit of a gap underneath. So it will be a little bit more fragile if it gets hit. So just take care when handling the millimeter wave sensor, not to bend it. Otherwise the socket could get quite loose. This is kind of the best way to mount the millimeter wave sensor, unfortunately, since there is components on the backside of the millimeter wave board that would prevent us from soldering it flat. Plus we wanted to make the board removable since it is quite an expensive component. Then take your PIR and just slot it into the black slot. It just pushes in like so. Really easy to install both of those sensors. So once installed, it'll look something a little bit like this. Most of you will likely want to power this via the USB type C port, which can also be used for flashing. But for those of you who like to tinker, there is some additional header pins down at the very bottom, which can be used to power the board instead of the USB port, along with a selectable jumper to choose which power supply you want to use. Also on the board is six additional headers, which includes four spare GPIO pins that can be used to extend functionality if you want to, along with additional sensors or devices, along with a 3.3 volt header and a ground pin for power. Next, I want to grab the front of the case and that is a simple uh, way to install it. So it just goes on, clicks into place like so, and you'll see that it hooks around the back a little bit to just hold on and remains completely toolless. So it just clicks on like that. And that is the case pretty much installed. You can then go ahead and clip on the stand onto the backside and yeah, that is everything you actually need to do hardware wise when you take it out of the box. The EP1 will come pre-flashed with ESP Home and is ready to set up out of the box so you don't need to do any flashing yourself. And ESP Home makes this seriously easy and it's so great what the guys over there have been able to do with this. So let me show you how to set it up. Once you plug in power, you will notice the status LED on the ESP32 start flashing along with the millimeter wave sensor LED. The Everything Presence one will show up as an access point that you can connect using your phone or your laptop to, and it will either open up the page automatically, or if you open a browser and go to 192.168.4.1, it will open up the configuration page. Simply select your Wi-Fi network and enter the password, hit save, and the EP1 will restart and join your Wi-Fi network. If you enter the Wi-Fi details incorrectly, give it a few minutes and it should show up again as an access point for you to enter the correct details. Once connected to Wi-Fi, within Home Assistant, head over to Settings, Devices and Services, and your EP1 should have already been auto-discovered and detected. So simply hit the Configure button to add it to Home Assistant, and the EP1 setup is done and as easy as that. It's actually amazing how far this process has come in the last like year or even two years. It's a vastly different experience and it is so easy to set up devices with ESP Home. If you go into the device page of the EP1, we have a few different sensors and settings that I'll show you first so that you can understand what each one does. In the controls section, we have controls that relate to the DF Robot Millimeter Wave Sensor. So you can set the range and the distance using the distance parameter up to a max of eight meters. So you can limit the range or just set it to the max range if you want to. Now, just be aware that because it has eight meters of range, that doesn't necessarily mean it will be able to detect really tiny movements like breathing at the max distance of eight meters. It will get a little bit less sensitive at those extreme distances. So you'll still want to optimize the placement as best you can. But that is where you can set the distance if you want to. 
And also on this page, we can control the LED on the board to disable that from flashing, which is really good as it does get a little bit annoying. And then the off latency is how long after the last motion was detected before it will go back to a clear status, if that makes sense. I wouldn't really recommend setting this under sort of 15, 20, probably even 30 seconds. It doesn't really make sense to have it less than that, but that is where you can control it if you want to. You can also enable or disable the millimeter wave sensor on this page too, if you want to, as well as enable and disable UART debugging stuff if you need. You can also control the ESP32 LED. Under the sensor section, we have our humidity, light level and temperature sensors, which are all quite self-explanatory, but just be aware that in ESP home code for the EP1, there is a negative two degree offset for the temperature sensor, which is user configurable. So if you want to change the offset, that is where you can go in and do that. And then we have our three remaining sensors, millimeter wave, PIR and occupancy. Millimeter wave is obviously the millimeter wave sensor detecting motion or presence by itself. PIR is the PIR sensor by itself. And then the occupancy sensor is both of those sensors combined. So if either the PIR or the millimeter wave sensor detects presence or movement, the occupancy sensor will change to detect it. That's the sensor that you'll probably want to use mostly in your automations and such, as it combines both sensors, but there may be exceptions where you want to use one or the other. The reset time of the PIR is 10 seconds by default, so it will stay on for 10 seconds after the last motion was detected, and you can configure that to be one second or 60 seconds or whatever you want to in the ESP home config very easily. And the millimeter wave sensor off time is controlled by the box up at the top. So whatever you have in the off latency box is how long the millimeter wave will stay on for after the last motion. The occupancy sensor has an off time of 60 seconds by default. So once both the millimeter wave and the PIR sensors are marked as clear, 60 seconds later, the occupancy sensor will go off. And again, that is configurable in the config if you want to change that but I wouldn't recommend keeping the occupancy sensor a little higher personally. There isn't really much need to have it less than sort of one to two minutes, but the option is there if you want to, and that is really the advantage of ESP Home is you can configure all of these settings however you want. If you want to make changes to the ESP Home config, make sure you have the ESP Home add-on installed, which by the way, if you just want to use the EP1 out of the box as is, you don't need to have that installed. But then head over to ESP Home add-on and you'll see that there is a config already waiting for you to adopt. So hit the adopt button to bring that into your ESP Home dashboard so that you can make changes and then you can find the full ESP Home config for this sensor over on GitHub, which I will have linked down below so that you can copy it, paste it and then make any changes you want. If you want to easily append a room to the name of all of the sensors so that you can easily tell it apart if you bought quite a few of these units, then you can add a name to the room section which should add it to all available sensors. So there we go, that is the Everything Presence One finally coming out after five months of hard work behind the scenes. Super excited for you to start getting them and start using them in your smart home. This is literally my ideal sensor that I wish I had in my smart home a few years ago. And I think we ended up adding every single feature that I actually wanted into this. I don't feel we made any compromises in terms of features, at least with the hardware currently available. Every time we got a prototype back from PCBWay and we felt there was some sort of limitation or something that we should fix, we just ended up actually adding it onto the board. So yeah, we didn't make any compromises, at least I feel, and I feel really proud to be able to make hardware first and foremost designed for use with Home Assistant and for the Home Assistant community primarily. With local control, no cloud BS, and I don't think anything else exists like this sensor right now, which is pretty nice to be able to say, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do with it when you get your hands on it. Like I say, if you do want to get your hands on it, this board and this case and everything that goes with it, there is still a couple of units left for pre-order if you want to 
get in on the first wave and we are aiming to be shipping out for around mid to end November. And that's about going to do it for this video. I hope you did enjoy it. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this, the EP1, and if you plan on pre-ordering one. If you do pre-order one, then thank you so much. Really appreciate you. And if you don't, then that is all good too. Also down below, this gets me thinking about other devices that we can make. I've got tons of smart home devices that I want to tackle and I think we could do better and tons of ideas that I want to experiment with. But leave me your suggestions down below and you never know, it might just be the next device. Anyways, that's about going to do it from me. Please make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed if you aren't already. Thank you so much for 100,000. Still insane to say that. And I will see you in the next video.